And I'm as big and switched on. I didn't have it switched on.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to our Community Garden Sunday here at Covenant Presbyterian Church. What a blessing it is to worship with all those gathered here as well as those worshiping online with us this morning. Just a few announcements as we begin. I encourage you to take a look at all the many things listed on our blue announcements sheet this morning, and you'll see at the very top that we are um, masking as a congregation um, for all, all folks, uh, vaccinated or unvaccinated, and uh, as an act of, of loving our neighbors. Um, some other fun things that are coming up, Rally Day, mark your calendars for September 12th. Immediately following worship, we will have our Rally Day Fall Festival. We, our theme is Connecting Community, Faith, and Friends. And you will find an array of things going on at Rally Day this year. There will be booths to learn about all the faith formation groups here at Covenant that you can get connected in. We'll have a hot dog lunch and some cool frozen custard for everyone, along with a number of games and activities, including a cakewalk, cornhole, pumpkin bowling, and a candy corn ring toss, among more. So we hope that you'll mark your calendars and plan to enjoy uh, connecting with community, faith, and family on September 12th. Next Sunday, we will have a child and youth protection policy training meeting at 9.15 here at the church. Anyone for the course of this year, from now through Bible school this upcoming summer, it's important that you engage in this training. Um, the, the safety of our children and youth is of utmost importance to us here at Covenant. And so please plan to be here next Sunday, 9.15, for that training. And there will also be an evening Zoom training next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. So we'll be in touch with emails about how to sign up for the Zoom option if that is what you need to do. And then finally, we extend our thanks to the Covenants Community Garden um, Earth Care team that is helping with our leadership in worship this morning. We appreciate um, your, your leadership and your guidance as we planned our worship service for today. And so let us now prepare our hearts and our minds to worship our living God.
Let's join together in our morning call to worship. Remembering God's abundant, abundant welcome for us in creation, friend or stranger, enter and welcome. Let us worship God together. Please join me in our call to confession. Let us draw near to God with sincerity of heart and full assurance of faith. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. Loving God, in the garden you created us to live in relationship with you, to love and serve one another, and to care for all your creatures. Yet in the hardness of our hearts, we dismiss your commandments, shirk our responsibilities, and seek to go our separate ways. Lord, have mercy on us, redeem us, restore us, and recreate us for the sake of Christ our Savior. Amen. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
Aaron. And this is a book that is actually something grew, that grew out of someone's kindness. Her name is Anna Lee, and she's here today. And she donated this book to our library to share some kindness with all the girls and boys who might want a chance to look at it. And I thought I would share it with you today. If you plant a seed by Kadir Nelson, who is a wonderful author, by the way. If you plant a tomato seed, a carrot seed, and a cabbage seed in time with love and care. Tomato, carrot, and cabbage plants will grow. And you can see the little rabbit and the mouse enjoying them quite a bit. Ooh, and now there are some people, well, I say people, birds, staring at those things. Wonder what they're going to do. Ooh, they're giving them the eye. If you plant a seed of selfishness in a very short time, it will grow and grow and grow. And you can see these bunnies, the little bunny and the mouse, they don't want to share their good things. They will grow into a heap of trouble. But if you plant a seed of kindness, In almost no time, the fruits of kindness will grow and grow and grow. And you can see where those birds helped to plant the seeds, and now they're all full of good things. And they, they have grown a full garden. And it says, and they are very, very sweet. And so I think this book is wonderful because it teaches us when we plant seeds of kindness, that kindness grows and grows and grows. And, I, um, and, and we want to share it and we want others to enjoy it. And someone shared Miss uh, Susan Ford shared with me some treasures this morning. And again, it's that sharing makes you want to grow. It just grows and grows and grows, and you can't wait to share it with others. She found some treasures. Now, this Miss Susan is how many years old? 200 million years old. And she got this by, dig, by digging, 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 and, and learning about our beautiful earth. And this is what she saw when she was with a team digging on some rocks. Just looked like a regular rock. But if you turn it over, look at this. Wow, it's beautiful. And so thank you, Miss Susan, for sharing this with me so that I could share it with all of you during our time with children. Again, that seed of kindness and generosity just grows and grows and grows. And you might want to come up and look at these after the worship service up here. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the seeds that give us food. But we thank you too for those seeds that give us kindness and generosity. Help us to sow them. Help us to sow those seeds of kindness, generosity, and love, and grow them and grow them and share them with others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm getting taller. <laughs> Whoa. <sighs> this is what the top of my refrigerator must look like, I guess. As we prepare to listen to scripture, either being read or proclaimed, let us pray. As this day surrounds us like a garden with a thousand trees, 
Guide us, O God, by your spirit, with your word spoken and proclaimed. Fill us with your knowledge and your truth. And in your truth, may we find wisdom and in your will, discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture to reading today comes from a Bible fair, uh, paraphrase called The Beginning. And it's Genesis chapter 2, verses 8 through 10 and verse 15. Listen now to the word given to us from our Creator. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east. And there he put a man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and for good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divides and becomes four branches. The Lord God took the man, and he put him in the garden of Eden, and he was there to till it and to keep it. The second part of our scripture today is Psalm 8, a beautiful, beautiful creation poem. O oh God, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. And when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are human beings but that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them, yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of of your hands. You have put all things under the feet, all sheep and oxen, all the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. How many of you have a garden? Show of hands see lots of hands out there. How is your garden doing? I've seen lots of pictures on Facebook of some beautiful gardens. Well, Bob and I, we don't have a garden, but I have so many garden memories in my mind. My grandfather, who I called Pop, um, he had a garden, and I remember scarecrows with tin pans that would clang and scare away all the birds. He measured his rows quite precisely as he prepared to plant his garden. My other grandfather, who I called Pop Jones, used to say that nothing thrilled him more than to put his hands in the soil. My Granny Jones would work for hours in the garden, and then she would turn all those things from the garden into wonderful food and can a lot of them, pickles and tomatoes and so forth. My neighbor growing up, Mr. Williams, he had strawberries in his garden, which we did not have, and I thought that was really special. We loved it when he called us to the fence and handed some over to us. 
One of our neighbors here in Roanoke has a garden in his front yard. It's different. Um, but we notice, we, we always say it's like an enchanted forest walking through his front yard because there are sunflowers that cover the sidewalk. And right now there's a big pumpkin growing that we enjoy watching every single day. In my own family, my dad had a garden in our backyard. And when I was a teenager, and my brother was a teenager, old enough to stay at home by ourselves, he would leave us a list of chores to do in the summer. Every day we had a list, and we kind of dreaded looking at it every morning. But we had to have all those things finished by the time he got home in the afternoon. Always, 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 there was something on the list that had to do with tending the garden. We had to pull weeds. We had to water portions of it or dig things up like potatoes or pull off the corn. And I loved to eat everything that came out of our garden. But as the teenager, I didn't really like having the responsibility attached to all of it. I didn't want to take time for it. I had other things distracting me. And I just wanted to enjoy the good stuff out of it. Sometimes I think as humans, we do that with God's garden. But Jesus talked about lilies of the field, mustard seeds, good soil, and sowing seeds. So much about gardens in our lives. Well, community gardens are sort of a thing these days. I did some reading on community gardens this week, and a community garden is a single piece of land that is gardened collectively by a group of people. And researchers have studied community gardens quite intensely, and they have found that community gardens are great places to befriend our neighbors. They are a great place to learn from experienced gardeners. They are wonderful places to rebuild and restore health. Study after study has shown the benefits to psychological health, particularly those who have experienced severe trauma, of working in a garden. Mental and emotional benefits have been found for those who are aging, and even improved attention for children who have deficit, attention deficit disorders can be found in the garden. Gardening has actually been used as a tool for therapy for many conditions. It's a place to observe our interconnectedness. In a single garden, you have a vibrant ecosystem, birds, insects, worms, all sorts of critters in all stages of life, all connected. The garden is a place for teamwork, to be a part of that system. It's also a place where young, old, rich, poor, any group you can think of has something to offer. All are welcome into the garden scene. And it's a place to celebrate that which makes us different. It's a place to share about our food cultures and our backgrounds. And the garden is a place to practice generosity. Years ago, I had a dear friend who I call granddaddy, even though he really wasn't my granddaddy. He lived to be, I think, 103 years old. And one of his greatest joys, he kept a garden his whole life, and one of his greatest joys was sharing the bounty of that garden with his neighbors. When he was too old to tend to his garden, his family did it for him under his direction. And he had a lot of directions, but they made it happen. And then he would deliver the, the bounty to his neighbors with joy. And here at Covenant, did you know we have our own community garden? Our garden has cucumbers, tomatoes, zucchini, green beans, and strawberries. One person who helps with the tending of the garden 
from this team, he has shared some of his tomatoes with other members of the garden who have then taken those tomatoes and grown them in their personal gardens and then given back to the bounty associated with our covenant garden. That seed of generosity grows and grows. And Covenant's community garden has yielded approximately 120 pounds of vegetables this summer, the fruits of which have been given to those in need here in our Roanoke community, those who are seeking services at the Presbyterian Community Center, filling their bodies with the life-giving nutrients of fresh vegetables. There just isn't anything better. Well, in our scripture reading today, we find ourselves in God's garden, the creation account of the Garden of Eden. And we see that there are trees, an array of living things, birds, livestock, a whole ecosystem. And the Lord took humans, put them in the garden to till it and keep it. Till it and keep it. Now, I think this scripture isn't just a scripture of location, of where the humans were placed, but it's a statement of purpose for us humankind. Other religions, other cultures have creation accounts where humankind is created as some sort of an accident. But here, we see that humans are an intentional creation, created for a reason, a purpose, We weren't created for ourselves. We're given a purpose to till and keep the garden, God's garden. Now, if we look up the Hebrew translations of the words till and keep, till means to serve. We are here to serve the earth and all its living things. And the word to keep in Hebrew means to preserve and protect. We are here. We are given a purpose to preserve and protect this good earth and all living things in it. Sometimes I know I'm guilty of sort of elevating the human role in the whole creation account, like we're this great crescendo of creation, the final thing, and then God rests. But perhaps we're not at the top of it all, but we're just in the center. An important role to take care of the garden, to tend to God's garden, the earth, and to look out toward its interests instead of our own. We till, we work the ground, we sweat, and we serve God and creation and people, meeting the needs of the land, the air, the water, and people everywhere. We sweat in the garden, and we work to preserve it and to protect it. This is not only our purpose, but our mission. As humans, we're capable of seeing the big picture, and we are charged to till and to keep, to serve, preserve, and protect. And in doing so, I think we find that all that research that has been done is true, This earth is a place to connect with our neighbors near and far. We learn and we grow from one another. We're reminded of our oneness as well as our beautiful differences. We're reminded of our interconnectedness. And in this garden, whether we like it or not, we have responsibility. We can't just do what I wanted to do as a teenager and enjoy everything without any responsibility attached. We're not at the top. We're a part of this interconnectedness to tend the garden, to serve the earth, to preserve and protect it. It's our mission. It's our purpose. Now, if we continue to read on in Scripture into Genesis 3 and so forth and so on, you know the story. We know about Eve and Adam, their hiding, their excuses. And Scripture tells us that God walked in the garden in the cool of the day. God calls out, where are you? as they're hiding. 
God continues to walk in this garden, our earth. And I wonder, perhaps God is calling to us, where are you? How are you doing with the tilling and the keeping? And sometimes, perhaps at that question, we too might feel like hiding. We have disappearing lands, forests, ice caps, natural resources that reveal our nakedness. Human consumption of the Earth's natural resources has more than tripled since 1970. And according to scientists at NASA, this will lead eventually to the destruction of our rainforests. How are we serving, preserving, and protecting the garden? And like Adam and Eve, perhaps we have an array of excuses, but there is no excuse. Did you know that American companies use enough paper to encircle the earth three times? And when plastic bags and other plastic materials end up in our ocean, we kill up to one million sea animals each year. Now, I will pause here and say I'm very proud of our covenant church. We do recycle here at our church. We both paper and plastics. But I wonder in my personal life, I question myself, could I be doing more? And I know the answer is yes. I can't rationalize it. And did you know that just this August, the UN said that climate change is at a code red level for humanity. It is human influence that has caused these unprecedented warming patterns. So God is calling out, where are you? Where are we? God walks in the garden in the cool of the day. Where are you? How is the tilling and the keeping of God's garden going?
as God so freely offers us the gift of life, abundant in this, God's community garden, let us respond with gratitude, offering our gifts and our lives to God. give thanks and praise to you, O God, for the free and abundant gift of grace. Let the lives, let the gifts of our lives be a sign of unending gratitude for your undying love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before engaging in our praise of the people and our saying together the Lord's Prayer, a couple of joys to share with you this morning and also a couple of concerns. First of all, what a joy to have Lisa Orr share her gifts with us on the piano today and add to our ministry of music. And Lisa, I just want to say uh, thank you for offering those gifts today. May God, in fact, always be uh, our vision. Also on this Lord's Day, uh, you certainly have noticed the rose that's uh, here by the pulpit. Uh, you'll see in your bulletins that this celebrates joyfully the birth of Richard Carey Cheatham on Thursday, August the 12th. Um, Carey's welcomed into a family. Uh, parents Justin and Kate, uh, Caitlin Cheatham, 
Big sister L, whom I understand is thrilled that she's in this world along with mom and dad, or that he's in this world, rather, along with mom and dad, and also the, great, uh, the grandparents. And they are great, but they're not great grandparents. They're just grandparents, but they're great. And that is Rick and Melissa Granwell. Okay, so you know, we welcome Richard. He's, he's uh, what a joy. And I think they're going to call him Carrie. Am I? Am I, I'm looking at, yes. So. so thanks be to God for that addition to our church family and to that family in particular. Um, you also see certainly our love and Christian sympathy go out to Pat Kirsten and Savannah Montgomery and family at the passing of Pat's beloved mother uh, and Kirsten's and Savannah's beloved grandmother. And so let us remember the Montgomery family um, in our thoughts and in our prayers. Uh, also on this Lord's Day, we have received a request from the Slate family. Uh, this is uh, a family that uh, is in our, our uh, community, uh, and uh, we ask that uh, the congregation uh, just lift them up in prayer by name. Will you join me now in our uh, prayers of the people in the Lord's Prayer? Let us pray. God, you made your good creation, and you hold it in your care. From each starry constellation to each forest under tiny creatures, mountain splendor, rivers, lakes, and ocean floors. You are loving, kind, and tender. In your care for what is yours. God, you love this world we live in, so you sent your only Son. Here on earth as in your heaven, God, we pray your will be done. By your Spirit may we listen to the earth and to the poor. May we care for you've given till creation is restored. Merciful and loving God, creative and ever creating, we thank you for the beauty of the earth, for that which you brought and are bringing still into being and for that which you have pronounced good. We thank you for creating human beings in your image, for redeeming, restoring, and renewing the earth in the name of your Son, the Christ, who came declaring and living, your will be done. We thank you for sending your blessed Holy Spirit to guide, encourage, and engage us in tending the community garden, this world, you have gifted us. Dear Lord, by all counts, this week and those in recent memory have been filled with raging fires, floodwaters, powerful storms, and devastating winds. Our hearts grieve for the people of Haiti and the loss of life and property. 
and for those whose lives, homes, and livelihoods have been swept away by water, wind, and flames in our nation and other nations around the world. Our hearts ache this Lord's Day for the events unfolding in Afghanistan. The scenes are hard to watch. Oh God, be with the Afghani people and the Americans and other nationalities living there. Be also with the military seeking to give aid. and with the national and international entities who are seeking to comfort the fearful, the lost, the bewildered, and the suffering. Merciful Lord, we pray also for all caught in the crosshairs of this pandemic, which is surging. Comfort the sick who are hospitalized. Be with those who are transitioning from this world to the next, and with those who love them. Grant your strength to those on the front lines practicing medicine with science and compassion. And among our most vulnerable populations, our children who are not eligible to be vaccinated and those with weakened immune systems, surround them, O oh God, with your presence. Dear Lord, we pray these are prayers in earnest. With steadfast faith in you as the loving creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all that is and is yet to be. Offering you our heartfelt joys and concerns. As well as our fears and our great hopes for a better world. In the name of the Holy One, the Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I am so thankful that Covenant is an earth care congregation and we have an earth care team leading the way, helping us to better tend, 
keep and till God's beautiful garden here this earth. I'm going to share with you, after the postlude, a song. And I encourage you to linger for a moment or two and listen to it. It talks about how now is the cool of the day. And I encourage you to listen to the words and think about what steps might you take? How might we lean into our earth care team to guide us and lead us? in tilling and keeping God's community garden healthy and bright for generations to come. For now is the cool of the day. Now is the time to put our hands in the soil. And now is the time to till and keep God's garden, serving, protecting, and preserving it. So go forth now into the garden, guided by the light and love of our God, creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Amen.
Sure.